Hello YouTube, welcome to another video. It's Steve here and um, we're going to be doing today uh, another stripped down video. Now yesterday I did um, the Miele's, Miele's S6 model uh, which is also known as the C2 um, Compact. So tonight I've got another Miele here which is also another one of my collection. Um, this one's known as the, um, the S8 model. Um, I've had this one for uh, since 2013, I think I had this, or just early in 2014, uh, just before the new EU regulations came out, which forced them all to uh, go down to a lower wattage and become known as the C3 Complete, which is basically the same unit as this, but with a lower a wattage motor. Now, they came as the power line, which was 1600 watts. I think some of them were 1200, which was the cat and dog. And then they had the Eco Line version, which was uh, I think it's 800 watt motor in the Eco Line, and basically it's just exactly the same units as this, just different motor wattages. So let's say that um, your Miller S8 had uh, blown its motor, or you'd used a bad bag in it, you'd sucked a load of crap through, and the motor would become noisy. Now motors for these are very expensive, and uh, if you were going to have to pay a Miller dealer to replace the motor in this for you. Not only would you be paying the price of a brand new motor, but also their very hefty uh, labour fees for fitting it, which may well cost you more than what a new cleaner would cost. So, if it was possible, let's say, to buy another Miele, which was a second-hand one, but it was in rather bad nick, it had been bashed about, but the motor was still good, then you would be able to change the motor over that and put it in this one, or in your one, your one which might have a decent uh, casing. So. It's basically another way to try and avoid having to pay for a new cleaner. So they look very complex when you look at them, with all these fancy lights and buttons on, but really they are actually extremely easy um, to strip down. So you can take the motor out of this within 10 minutes and put another one in. So you know, within half an hour you've changed the motor yourself. All you need to do it really is a T20 Torx screwdriver or a T20 bit for an electric screwdriver and a wide bladed uh, screwdriver which is basically that. So let's begin shall we? I shall uh, first of all reposition the camera. Because I think yesterday when I did the S6 I didn't quite have it high enough so some of the shots I was doing were cut off at the top. I'll try not to do that this time but it's a bit difficult when you're in a confined space like a kitchen. Right, okie dokie. Let's get rid of first of all the hose and the floor head. So we just unclick that. Take the floor head off the side and we'll take that away. Okay, so there's the unit then. We'll uh, just make sure on the camera we've got that in. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Okay, the first thing we need to do on here is to remove the lid. So like most metal canisters, you can't get access to the screws without removing the lid first. So we'll open the lid up. Right, now what we need to do is to get our screwdriver underneath this hinge here, into that gap, pull down on the screwdriver and lift up the hinge at the same time. So screwdriver into the gap like so, pull it down and as you lift up it will come off just like that. It really is very simple. All you are doing basically is you are pushing that little tiny clamp inwards. That's basically the stop that stops it from coming out all the way. So all you're doing in the screwdriver is pushing it down there, releasing that catch and then it allows you to lift the lid off. Okay. And what we can see inside here is a little uh, muffler it's not actually, well it does act as a filter I suppose, but more so for uh, sound uh, reduction in there. So that's what that one's for. So we'll put the lid to one side. Right, now we need to remove our filter. So we just pull that out. Now that's the, uh, the Miele Hepa Air Clean 50 filter. You, you, various models come with different types of filter, but in order to access the screw, you need to be able to remove that first. And you can see, just in here, there's the screw you're looking for. And just put that to one side. And we'll take the bag out as well. In here, it's a Miele GN style bag. Let me just check the camera again. Yeah, you can see that. So, once again, I'll stress here, it's really important, the Miele, to use their high clean bags. It's all part of the filtration system. 
If you start using copy bags in one of these that haven't got the right amount of layers in the bag, because this is like a nine layer bag, it acts as part of the filtration system. If you start using copy cheap bags in here, dust is going to leak through the bag. It's going to be drawn through that filter because that's not designed to have the cheap bags in and you're going to draw it straight into your motor. Now once it's gone through the motor, it's going to go through the windings at the back and that's going to damage the motor in time and you're going to end up with a motor that's packed up. So it's a false economy to use cheap bags in one of these because you're shortening the life of this drastically. Okay? The amount of these I see on eBay with loud motors, knackered motors, because when they show you the shot of inside here, it's got a copy bag in it. And I think, look at the state of the inside of here, it's filthy. But if you were in that situation and you'd blown your motor, you could take it to pieces, find another cheap uh, mealer which is actually working, and replace the motor. Okay. Now, what we need to do to get access to these, all the screws, Underneath these switches here are two more screws. So what we need to do is we need to remove those switches. Now what we, what we do is we get our flat bladed screwdriver, we pull the switch towards us like so, and we get the screwdriver in the gap between the switch and where the lights are, in between that housing, and slightly pull down on the screwdriver and you, you see the, the switch click out. Okay? We do the same at the other end, so that's clicked out and their switch comes out. You do that gently. Gently does it. You don't need to go yanking, they'll come out very easily. You don't need any kind of special mealer tools to, under, to uh, release one of these. There are certain channels on YouTube that tell you you need to have a special mealer tool, they want you to take it to the mealer dealer and pay them to do it. Right? You don't need a special mealer tool at all. We we'll take that one off, same again with this one, slightly down the gap, in that position, and leave it up, same on the other end, and leave it up, and it comes out. So basically what you've got, one clip there, and there's another one on the back. So what you're doing is you're releasing that clip first, and you're pulling it up, there's another one there, and you remove those switches. Very, very, very simple, but you need to be careful. Right, from there, what we need to do is we need to unclamp the, uh, the edge of the casing, we need to unclamp this and unclamp that, so we need to get a screwdriver and pull that off like so. Screwdriver underneath, lift up and pull that off, okay? Now, now that we've removed the switches, there is one screw in here and one screw in there. Let me just check the camera to make sure you can see that. Yes, I think you can. Okay, so one there, one there, one here, there's one there, one there, and two in the front. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take those screws out using my T20, and I'm going to be using my electric screwdriver. You don't need to use an electric screwdriver, you can just have a T20 screwdriver. Okay? But what you'll need It'll be, need to be a fairly long one, at least that long, because one of them, where is, where is it now? Down the back it's quite low down inside the cleaner, so for me I will use, when I can find it here, my extension, that's not the one, I have a load of bits you see, special uh, bits for my electric screwdriver which will just about fit anything. So let's, let's get going then, we've got one in the front here, One, that's two, three, four, one just under the filter cover here, that's five. I'm sure I'll need to get myself a new electric screwdriver to be honest with you. I think the battery isn't much good in this one anymore. It's made in China, that's the problem. 
unlike a meal which is made in Germany and they're made to last as long as you look after them properly. Let's put our extension on now onto the screwdriver to get this one here which is quite low down in the bottom. Okie dokie, so that should be all of the screws slackened off. Take out our cable slightly at the back, don't have it wound in all the way, we need to have that out slightly if I remember the last time I did this. Now do we need to get violent with it or not? Sometimes the cases pull, pull, pull off quite easily and sometimes they don't. And in this case it's pulled off quite easily. Right, so what you're doing, you're pulling that panel away from the side, the trim, grab hold of the side and lift up. Right, then you can remove the top of the machine as such. There's nothing else under there, that's removed. So you've still got a screw there, still got one there. So we'll just tip those out now. Right, let's put that to one side. Right, what have we got now then? Let's have a look in here. Let's take that screw out of there. I've got to remember now the last time I did this. Okay. So what we're doing, this part here on the back, when you took your deep screw out, that's allowed this part here to lift up, so you need to just unclamp it from the side and then that part there will lift out. It's like a T-shaped part and there's your little screw in the bottom. So when you're putting it back in, put your screw down to the bottom of there and you can lower it down and then do a screw up. So we take that part out. So what we've got at the back here, you can see the control panel there. And underneath here you can see the on-off switch there. And that little button there, that's the cord rewind operator there. So if I remember rightly, um, let me see, there's another screw just down in here. That's what we need to take out now. Now that we've got the case off, we've got a hidden screw down there. With these, there's more hidden screws than there were on the uh, S6. And I'm just looking now to see where the other ones were. So there's one in there, so we'll take that out now. basically lift it up gently, rock it backwards and forwards and what will happen, right, eventually when you've rocked it backwards and forwards enough, there's no more screws in there at that point so it will come off, you'll lift that off the cleaner. That is one complete module there. When I was on the other, on the other video I talked about mealers being made of modules. That is the a complete module there, that's the top of the motor housing and there you can see your um, sound deadening. Right, now if you wanted to clean that, you'd clean this all up if you had sucked up a load of crap through the motor and it was really dusty and covered in carbon dust, you could clean all that out. I wouldn't really put that in the washing machine though, because that's like, um, it's like a material that and I don't think it would do well for being washed, but you could still hoover it out. So there's the back of our case and the screw is still in there, so I'm going to just knock that out now. Okay. And that incidentally contained the control panel as well. So what we've got now, at this stage, is we can see now that the top's off, there is our motor. And there is our cord reel. Okay? So, it's a pretty easy job now. I mean, there's a seal just around here. You can see the, um, the seal from where the two halves go together. So make that a sealed unit inside there so that all the dirt that comes to the motor, if it does, will stay confined to within that area and shouldn't get over into the cord reel. Now it's possible to remove the cord reel 
Let's just uh, wind the cable in first. Let's take the motor out. It is possible to remove the cord reel, but I would take the motor out first. So you unplug it, like so. And let me just check now that there isn't any uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, any clamps in here. So I can take it out with one hand while still holding the camera. There we go. So you just lift the motor out of the case, as so. What type of motor is this? It's a 412-422. Okay, that's your that's your motor. See if I can get that a little bit uh, more clear. Okay. Mailer motor there again. The carbons are just in here. The other side there, and there's our windings. Now we can take this casing off the back. That's the uh, the restrain the motor restrainer. It's got two rubbers that just pull away from the back, like that, and then dropped off and put it back on. And there we can see the the rear bearing. So if you wanted to oil grease or oil your bearing, you can easily get to the back one there. The front bearing is a little bit more tricky to get to because you've got to take off you've got to take off your fan case. So you'd have to knock that off. That would give you access underneath to your fan. Now if you if your bag had burst or you'd drawn a lot of dirt through here, you would need to get this fan case off to be able to clean the fan out properly. Because the chances are that when you took this off you'd see all the dirt all in the back of the fan housing. So that's a good idea to do that if you can. On mine it doesn't need it because I've always used the right bags and my fan is absolutely perfectly clean in there. But that's how easy it is to get to the motor. And that wasn't difficult really was it? If you had took another machine apart and took the motor out you could swap them over just as easy as that. Right so I'll put this back on here. Now, if we wanted to take out the cord reel, let me just have a look here, because sometimes they're clipped in, sometimes they just lift straight out, and this one just lifts straight out, okay? Now, there's your cord reel. This here is the one-touch rewind mechanism. That white lever is what actuates it, and it pushes down on this rubber brake right and when you press that lever that rubber brake stays downwards until the cord is round completely in then as soon as you pull the cord out slightly it resets this mechanism here for the next time it pushes the brake back up again so if I do that let's just hold it here sometimes you, you've got to hold them in the right place let's pull it, pull it out slightly like so And then, when I actuate that there, you can see the brake lever at the bottom. So I'm holding it, that's why I'm not holding it in quite the right place. The brake has now come down, so that's not braking it anymore. So that should allow it completely to rewind. Now the brake, if you notice, is still down. But when I hold, I've got to hold it in exactly the right place here, otherwise it won't uh, move in. It's a bit tricky, really. So if I pull the cable back out, there we see it reset, and the brake now has gone back into the into the up position to stop it from being reeled back in again. But as soon as you press that again, it goes in. Right now, this here is your ventilator, that little hole. The ventilation comes down here, down here, and into the motor there. That, when the motor's running, draws air in from the bag housing through this tube and down here, and then it goes back into the case. All Miele cylinders have one of these ventilators on the cord reel, basically. I think it's to keep the cord reel cool, so if you're operating it without that fully pulled out, to stop this wire overheating, I think that that air that's drawn in through here will get drawn in through that hole where the plug is and attempt to try and cool this cord reel. Okay.
a little bit of information there. So now we are down to the basic carcass. So if you wanted to do any more cleaning, you could remove your sound deadening material, clean it all up, and basically that, that's the, the bottom of the case. So now we need to put it back together again. Very easy to do. So we'll start with the cord reel, and incidentally that's what they call a module as well. That's one complete unit. It is possible to replace the cable on this if you needed to. What you'd have to do is to remove those two screws, one there and one there, and that would give you access to the two terminals inside at the end of the black cable. So you'd reel it all out, remove this part, and you could re-cable it rather than having to buy a new cord reel. But the cord reel comes with all the connections you need on it. It comes with a connection to the motor, and it comes with your connection to the top part as well, to the controls. That's what I say, it's all modular. So, let's try and put it back together. So our cord reel will go back in exactly the same way as it came out, which is, uh, that's the way around it goes there. So you've got your, you need to pull that out slightly. And then we're gonna lower it inside, making sure that this hole here, this ventilator, goes into that hole just there, because that is the hole that goes into your bag housing. And the suction comes through that hole, through into this area. So the more power you put on it, the more suction comes through there, the more air it draws to the cord reel, to keep the cord reel cool. So let's just line the pipe back up. Line the, um, the cable back up on the back as well so that it slots nicely into here with the rubber seal and when you push it down that's secured so that's back in. Then we want to take our motor now obviously your port here needs to be on the top so you'll put your motor retainer on the back of the motor like so so that is facing downwards because that's the part that goes into the bottom of the case and we'll engage those two lugs with those two holes in the back of here and then push the motor down. I think basically I've got this on the wrong way around so we need to just turn this because it's not going on the back of the motor correctly so we need to make sure that that does. That's better. You know if something's not right because it won't line up properly. So there we go, just put that back in just like so. Not forgetting the front of the motor there, the rubber Put that on. Should have done that first, really. Jumped a step of myself. So put that on. Make sure that's on. You'll know it's wrong because the motor won't sit nice and snugly in here. So you know you've missed it. There we go. So then I'm going to connect the connector back up to the motor, and there we can see the connector. Right out. There we can see the connector there, which goes onto the electronics. When you push the top part on, that automatically connects itself back up. And that's what we're going to get now. So here's our electronics. And what we're going to do is we're going to lower this back on. So first of all, we would put our plug through, like so. It doesn't really matter if it rolls itself back in, but better if it doesn't. Lower the top down. It won't go in there nice and easily, you're not doing it quite right, so we just vertically straight down onto the machine so that that connector connects itself through. There we go, and that's gone in. Making sure that we're all down on the front, there and there, that's fine. And making sure that we've got no big gap there. All right, so that's, that's nice as it is now. So we're gonna put that one screw back in, which is the hidden screw which goes back in that hole there. So we're gonna put that in now. That's fine. And that was the only hidden screw that we had. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the back of our casing back on. Okay, and this will lower straight back on and push down nice and gently, as easy as that. Okay, and at that point, 
we can put this back in and that goes down that hole there so what it might be an idea to do first of all is get your screwdriver onto that screw onto the head of the screw before you push it down like so making sure those are out of the way before you push it down obviously So we just have to, what's happened is, is the screw's stopping it from going in, so we're going to have to take the screw out first. That's a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, that's better. So it's gone straight back down, exactly where it should have done. Okay, let's put the screw in and hope it falls down the hole. Yeah, I think might be lucky. in and then we can put all the other screws back in as well so one in there in fact what's happening is I'm running out of time on this one I'm gonna to have to do a part two on this one because I'm on to 26 minutes so unfortunately I'm gonna to have to end this video here because my camera is running out of memory it can only do 30 minutes at a time so we're gonna to have to end part one here and I'll carry on with the reassembly in part two so see you shortly